Call of Duty Black Ops was released back in 2010. It continued the story of War at War, bringing us one of the most engaging and confusing campaigns we've seen to date. But we're not here to talk about that today. I'm Lost Pie, and join me as we take a deep dive into Black Ops 1 in 2022. I'll admit it, Black Ops is my favorite COD of all time. When it comes to old school Call of Duties, this is the one that I play most frequently. Because of this, I have a decent understanding on how the game is currently faring. I won't let my love of this game get in the way of sharing any negativity towards it, as I want everyone watching this video to know the facts. Loading the multiplayer menu for Black Ops 1 always takes forever. When we finally get in, the player count read over 2,000 people online. Now when it comes to just multiplayer, it was around 850 for the entire stream, give or take. Most players gravitate to core TDM, as per usual. But there were a few lobbies going for Free For All, Domination, Capture the Flag, and S&D. For Capture the Flag and Search and Destroy, the player counts were low enough for one lobby each, so you either got in the game or you didn't. There was also a respectable amount of people in Hardcore Team Deathmatch, even though I was ass at it. I even found a match of Gun Game. Now BO1 has this nasty glitch on the PS3, where if you haven't played the game before 2017, your rank will always be reset when you sign on. With this being one of the more popular older CODs, this means you'll find a lot of low levels sweating it out with default classes. Rank and prestige are just numbers, they mean nothing here. So many matches were dominated by people under rank 5, it was ridiculous. Now I gotta say, the player base overall is fairly sweaty. As I said before, this is my favorite COD that I've been playing consistently for almost 12 years, but even I struggled on a few occasions. Campers and TDM are virtually non-existent, but there will always be a few here and there. Black Ops has always seemed to be popular with the split screeners too. No offense to anyone playing with their friends, but they're typically easy picking. There are plenty of oblivious noobs to pick on as well, but the majority of the players seem to be above average to sweaty in skill. As far as server stability and connections go, we're still in the peer-to-peer -peer era. With there still being a sizable player base, it's easy enough to get a lobby where everyone has green bars. There were some times where people were lagging around, but it was really only for one match. Just be prepared for the occasional host migration. Now let's discuss modders. I've always gloated about how I rarely saw modders on this game. The very first match I played today had a modder in it. I saw numerous modders throughout the entire stream as well. Now these weren't super hardcore mods, more along the lines of a weak aimbot, you know, like more so super aim assist. One match though, my classes and killstreaks got changed around. I have never seen as many chopper gunners in a 3 hour period as when I did in this play session. The majority of these modders were outside of core TDM. I rarely venture outside of there when I play, so maybe I just never noticed how bad it was in those other modes. As far as TDM goes from past experiences, modders are a rare occurrence. I would go months before I saw one, and when I did, I'd find another lobby and wouldn't see another for the longest time. Now as a bonus, I had someone in the chat ask about zombies, so I'll give you the rundown. Zombies hasn't changed much over the years. There's always a sizable player count, sometimes exceeding multiplayer. You'll usually find a lobby quickly, but chances are someone in there is AFK. Just to rub salt in the wound, they're the host and leave when they return to find they're spectating at round 7. If you get a game where everyone is there, at least one person will be running around stealing all the kills, hopping on everyone's windows. Then they'll sit there knifing the door, waiting for you to open it even though he has 5,000 more points than everybody else. It's still fun, but not if you're trying to take it seriously and get to high rounds. Overall, Black Ops 1 is still in amazing shape for how old it is. It's earning a green on my rating scale for its solid connections, high player count, and multiple available playlists. Though the amount of modders I saw was concerning. I just hope it doesn't become an issue because it would break my heart to see this game die. Now as I've been saying in all of these videos, it's only a matter of time before either Sony shuts down online play or Activision pulls the plug on the servers. If you can snag it for cheap, or if you already have it, pop it in for old time's sake. You never know when it'll be your last time playing. Thanks for watching everyone. I'll be covering most of the older Call of Duty games and possibly some other games once I'm done with those. Modern Warfare 3 is up next so make sure you like and subscribe so you can find out how that and other games are holding up in 2022.